you are being lied to by people who are trying to get huge government grants. If CO2 isn't bad and it's actually getting a little bit warmer, then why is the Great Barrier Reef still dying? Yes, well, it's not. I'm afraid to tell you. I'm glad to tell you. It is not dying. The biggest threat to the coral reef is cyclones, which causes great damage in the same way that huge storms will blow a forest over or huge fires will destroy a forest. Uh, the, there are natural events that are destructive, and that's something we have to recognize is that extreme weather has always been with us. It's never gone away, and we have to live with it. We have to figure out how to protect ourselves from it. But protecting the coral reefs, uh, you're not going to build a wall to stop the cyclone. So that's just nature. But the, but the Great Barrier Reef is not dying. It, it is actually perfectly healthy and is damaged at times. But what people don't realize is when an area of the reef is damaged, it grows back again. Life is very resilient. So people forget that everything dies. No individual of any species lives forever. They all die. So why aren't they all dead? Because new ones are born. The corals are putting out new polyps, seeds all the time, just spreading millions of them into the sea. But, and, and the coral reef of the, the Great Barrier Reef is not in the warmest oceans in the world by a long shot. The warmest oceans in the world are in Indonesia where they have the most biodiverse coral, 600 species, way more than the Great Barrier Reef, and the soft corals too, and where they have 2,000 reef fishes, by far the largest diversity of reef fishes in the world, are in the warmest oceans of the world. So this, you are being lied to by people who are trying to get huge government grants and go out there for two weeks maybe and come back and tell everybody that the reef is dying so they can get more money to study it next year. And that is why Dr. Peter Ridd, a 30-year career professor at Cape, at, at uh, James Cook University, at James Cook University in Queensland, he was fired for disagreeing with the other professors about the health of the coral reef. He was fired because he disagreed with the other professors. As a professor, you're supposed to have academic freedom and be allowed to speak your mind, whether other people agree with you or not. That's the whole idea of the university, is a bastion where people can be free to speak their mind. In businesses, you can't because you, you got, you're, you're an employee. You can't say anything you want there. But in the university, you're supposed to. Yes, Max? So schools keep telling us about the greenhouse effect and how CO2 is killing everything. What, what, why? And like, so they have these like videos and stuff and it looks so real and I'm gonna, and how do they look so real? I'm sure it's hard for someone your age to understand why this is happening. Um, they, they, it's really sad. There is a greenhouse effect. It's one of the most important effects in the earth because it's why life is possible. The greenhouse effect makes the atmosphere, the Earth, about 33 degrees Celsius warmer than it would be if there were no greenhouse gases. But what they don't tell you is that water vapor, in other words, humidity, is by far the most important greenhouse gas. Have they ever told you that? The humidity in the air, water vapor, which is a, a, a strong greenhouse gas, is 25 to 100 times as much as there is CO2. So CO2 is a very minor greenhouse gas. All else being equal, it might cause a slight change in temperature, but all else is not equal. Because the, the, the climate system is so complicated, you never know what the feedback effects are going to be, negative or positive or neutral. And so we have no actual evidence that CO2 has caused this increase in temperature of one degree since 1850, because it was already warming at that same rate for 150 years prior to our putting any additional CO2 into the atmosphere. So there is no scientific proof that our CO2 
has caused any change in the temperature, even though theoretically it might cause a little bit, but it's not the main greenhouse gas. Water vapor is. And water vapor is very variable from very dry humidity to very moist humidity, 100% humidity. When the, when the air is saturated with water vapor and any more water will cause it to condense out into droplets and form clouds. Clouds are the wild card of the climate change discussion. And a Canadian, fellow Canadian uh, singer wrote this about clouds. I've looked at clouds from both sides now, from up and down, and still somehow, it's clouds illusions I recall. We really don't know clouds at all. Imagine trying to predict the pattern of clouds in a computer model 10 years from now, right? It's completely ridiculous to even think about that. It can't be done. And that's, that's an example of how incredibly complex the climate system is, and they try to put it in a computer, and then they tell you what the computer said. Well, the computer said what they told it to say, because when you build a model in a computer, you put in your own assumptions. There's where the word assumptions come in, and they say that the output of the computer is a conclusion, when in fact it's based on their assumptions. Not mine, not yours, but theirs. And their assumption is if CO2 goes up, the temperature will go up. So, of course, the computer predicts that the temperature will go up because they put that in it in the first place. That's why you should never trust computers the way I put it for predicting the future, that is. Trust computers to do a good calculation. But don't trust them to predict the future because computers are not crystal balls. Remember, the crystal ball is a mythical object. And so are computers that can predict the future, because there aren't any. It's not real. So don't believe in that. Believe in the reality, what's really happening in the world, not in what somebody has programmed into a computer to think they can predict the future. It can't be done. Good. So we've got a question from Lottie, but can you sing that part of the song for us? You want me to sing it? Uh, okay. sorry, sorry. I've looked at clouds <laughs> from both sides now from up and down, and still somehow, it's clouds illusions I recall. We really don't know clouds at all. It's a good one. So, <laughs> the video you just watched is for a new education platform called True Arrow Academy of Critical Thinking, or TACT for short. TACT will be an alternative education resource platform that's non-woke and non-indoctrinating, with each lesson being a potential turning point in a young learner's understanding on a range of important topics. TACT will evolve into many hundreds of animations and filmed lessons written, run and influenced by an exceptional mix of academic heavyweights teaching against the grain, with lessons encouraging open discussion, critical thinking and debate. TACT's duty of care is to arm and shield you against modern, subversive, mainstream education. Supporters will be the lifeblood of TACT. If you would like to support this project, let's build this together at givesengo.com forward slash TACT. Thank you so much.